again. Welcome to episode 40 of Dinner from the Dining Car. Today is August 22nd, 2021. Happy Sunday. Today we're going to be making a recipe from the Illinois Central, the baked deviled crab served on sourdough toast. So uh, here's what you need for this recipe. First, crab meat. You need one pound. Now you can use imitation crab meat if you want or you can use the real deal. Uh, depending on where you live in the country the real deal could get <laughs> very expensive. We're talking in this area crab meat is about $25 a pound. That's a little expensive for me right now so we are going with the imitation. Much cheaper, but we'll, we'll, it should work just fine. Then you're going to need, excuse me, grab my book here. You're going to need an onion, just a brown onion. And you're going to chop this up. You need a red pepper. You're going to also dice this up. You're going to need garlic. Now we're using minced garlic, uh, about a teaspoon equals one clove and that's what it calls for so we're going to be using a teaspoon of minced garlic. You're going to need cayenne pepper, just a little bit. Thyme leaves, oops, just a little bit. And salt just a little bit. You're also going to need Worcestershire sauce. Now I got lucky when I went grocery shopping yesterday. I found this bottle of Lee and Perrins which is the real deal when it comes to Worcestershire sauce or as we call it what's this here sauce. Uh, and this was on sale. I got a huge bottle of it for less than four bucks. Made me very happy. You're going to need three hard-boiled eggs. Now, I haven't boiled them yet. I'm about to get started with that after I do this intro. You're also going to need four slices of bread. Now, you're going to take these. You're going to you're going to soak them in. Uh, excuse me. You're just going to moisten these with some water and break it up into small pieces. You'll want to take the crusts off. And then finally you'll need the juice of one lemon. Anyway, that's all you need for this. Uh, I guess that's it for now. And we'll, uh, we'll be back when we get started cooking. See you then. Okay, folks. Hi, we're back and we're going to get started here. The first thing we do is we get our butter. Actually, that's not, that's not completely true. The first thing you want to do is preheat your oven to 350 and well grease a casserole pan. Now, we take our butter and you want uh, couple of tablespoons of it. Now you're going to start with about six tablespoons of butter. The rest of it we're going to melt and pour on top of this before we put it in the oven. Another thing we're going to do, recipe doesn't exactly call for it but I like to do it, is a little bit of olive oil when you're melting the butter. That will prevent your butter from burning. Meanwhile, we have chopped up all the other ingredients. We have chopped up the onion, the red pepper, and 
and the hard boiled eggs. Now here's a trick if you might want to think about for hard boiling eggs. When you hard boil the eggs, you want to put them in boiling water for at least five minutes. Five to ten is what I do. Then when you take them out, you put them in a bowl of ice cold water. That way, you'll leave them sit for 10 to 15 minutes. That way, when you don't go to peel them, those eggshells will just pop right off, and it works wonders. Okay, our stuff, our butter is crackling. So, the bread's nice. So, into the butter, we put the onions. Where my spoon? Where my spoon? Somebody put my spoon away. Your butter, for your onions, and your peppers. And you're going to brown those up a little bit. That beep was the oven saying, hey, I'm at 350 now. It's kind of nice having an oven that does that. Meanwhile, while those are frying, we also have not only our crab meat, we have four slices of bread that we've chopped up into little pieces and we've soaked it in milk. This is going to go into the frying pan with everything else to uh, start this up. going to brown these up nicely. May take a little while, but gosh, it already smells good. Into this, you're going to put your thyme. Now you're going to need A quarter teaspoon of thyme leaves. I'm going to go with half a teaspoon because I like a little more thyme. A little more thyme. You're going to put in the same half a teaspoon of cayenne pepper. Also going to put in half a teaspoon of salt. Well, I'm just going to wing it on the salt because I use a mill. Oh, that smells good already. Oh my goodness, that smells good. And we're going to gonna give a stir. I don't know if you guys heard Judy in the background saying, that's delicious, Tony. Well, if you were around for last week, when we made her chicken recipe, talk about a winner. Oh, this smells really good. Oh, with the oh you can smell the thyme and the cayenne pepper. And once that's all stirred in, then you add in your what's this here sauce. You're going to need about a tablespoon to a tablespoon and a half of Worcestershire, Worcestershire, Worcestershire sauce. That'll be the end of that. And your garlic. You need a clove of garlic. So if you're using minced garlic, that's about a heaping teaspoon. I'm going to see if I can zoom this in a little bit. So you can actually see what's cooking here. 
appetites. You guys don't want to see me. You want to see the food, right? Oh, this already smells insane. Oh, I wish they had smell-o-vision. You guys would be impressed. All right, once that's stirred a little bit, then you're going to add... Uh, Got to cut the lemon. Got to cut the lemon for the juice. You're going to add the bread. Now, this and you're going to stir that up a little more. Now, as far as the bread goes, uh, the recipe isn't specific about what type of bread. I thought white bread would be great, but we don't use right white bread here. Uh, so I have in here four slices of nine grain oat. And it ought to add a whole lot of yumminess to the dish. And do not, repeat, do not cut off the crusts. You want to leave the crusts in there. Right away, you'll notice this is starting to turn into a nice little paste. Oh my goodness, I'm tempted to try this already. All right, now comes the fun. You need to add the eggs. Your three ground up hard-boiled eggs. The crab meat. Now the crab meat, I haven't diced, I haven't cut up. I'm just going to dump it in there. Again, we're using imitation crab because real crab meat in this area is not easy to find. And when you do find it, it's very expensive. All you can get around here is a little jar that's five ounces. So to make up a pound, you would need basically three to four jars. And it's $16.99 a jar. So do the math, that's 50 some dollars a pound. I said 25 in the intro, but I hadn't done the math yet, so. Oh my. This already smells really good. Oh. And then you squeeze in the lemon. Oh, this is a juicy lemon. I love it already. Try like heck not to get any seeds in this when you squeeze the lemon. If I had any sanity, I'd buy a lemon squeezer. But I don't have any sanity, so screw those seeds. Oh, that is really, that's lemon juice right there. Now you can use lemon juice concentrate if you must. And I wouldn't begin to tell you how much to use, but I just prefer, oh my goodness, that's good, a fresh lemon. Turn this down so it doesn't burn. We don't want to burn this, do we, folks? Okay. That's a nice, yummy, I got to get a fork spoon and try this. Let me grab a little spoonful of this goodness. Mm, Judy, come here. Oh, I 
if she's not within earshot. Oh man, that's tasty. Ooh, got a little bit of uh, kick to it from the cayenne pepper. Wow. And the Worcestershire, you could taste that too. Okay, now that you got all that in there, I need to get one of these bowls back for a minute. We need to take another half a stick of butter and you're going to melt it. So let me grab, cut. Place in microwave. And melt. Okay, now that you have all this mixed, oh my goodness, that really smells delicious. That really smells delicious. That bread gave it a nice hold together, firm up kind of thing. Mm. Judy! Oh, well, come here for a second. Okay, hang on a second. Let's put these bowls down. Okay. Okay. Now that it's cooked, you have a greased baking pan. Once you get the fire off, it's a little fiery. Yeah, oh, that's from the cayenne pepper and the Worcestershire, I think. It's got a little kick to it, doesn't it? Yeah, a little too much for me, though. Well, quick ripening. Okay. Then you just pour this into your baking pan, and I'm glad I picked this pan. I hope you guys can see this. I might not have to move the camera. See it. Let me move the camera slightly. Uh, there we go. And you're just going to even this out in your baking dish. sure I scrape as much of this out of here as I can get out. Because I don't want to leave any of this behind. Mm. Okay. Then you take the butter that you melted and you just pour it on top. Yeah, if you folks are looking for something healthy, I don't think this is it. In fact, I'm positive this isn't it. This is kind of bad for you in all sorts of ways. Mm. It does have a heck of a kick to it. So, if you guys make this at home, you're going you're gonna to find that it's... Wow. Anyway, after you do that... Your oven's preheated to 350. In you go. Now that will be cooked for 15 to 20 minutes. Kitchen time. We're going to try 17 minutes and then we'll come back and uh, we'll get it out and you'll see it plated. So, we'll be back when that comes out. See you in a bit. Uh, 
Okay, folks, here it is about 15, 16, 17 minutes later. We're going to pull it all out of the oven, and oh, it is bubbling. Oh, my goodness, that smells good. Oh. I'm going to quick like turn this camera so you guys can see this because this looks really good. There you have it. That's coming right out of the oven. Now, we'll get it on some plates. Oh, too much. Okay. Spoon. Now when we, pr ow, 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 cabinet, ouch, knees hurt. Ow. When we pre-tasted this, it was a little spicy. So if you have people that are, if you have people that have a problem with spicy food, you may want to either eliminate or cut back on the cayenne pepper. Is that enough for you for a start? Oh, that's plenty. I, I want to eat more than that. And here's what it's going to look like on my plate, guys. We decided with a vegetable we're just going to go with some uh, cherry tomatoes. Anyway, here's what it looks like on the plate. There you have it. This is the Illinois Central Baked Deviled Crab. So, if you uh, like this video, go ahead and smash the like button. And if you haven't already, please subscribe. Wow, this smells good. And if you have any questions, comments, want a copy of the recipe, email me at dinnerfromthediningcar at yahoo.com. And until next week or whenever we see you again, have a great Sunday night. Thanks for watching.